The internet has given bullies a whole new avenue to attack their victims. Now, cyberbullying on text and messages on sites like Facebook and Twitter is becoming more and more common. Now, all of your friends and your friends' friends can have front row seats to an online fight. Take a look at some of these mean words. Sorry to kill your vibe, but you're ugly. You are a slut, a blonde, fake slut. I could seriously punch a few people in the face and feel awesome. I hate when bitches think everyone is jealous of them, when in reality, we all just hate you. Go kill yourself, you loser. Charming. But one of the most disturbing trends on social media, frankly, is this. Take a look. Should I video this? But I, I don't want to hold the camera. I feel stupid. Hey, hey. what the f <laughs> hey, 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 Oh my god. Dude. Dude. Well, we're going to talk to the girl that threw that shovel and the teen behind the camera that was videotaping it instead of stopping it. It's all about the fights and the little red record light. And what really gets me? All of these bystanders. People watch some girl on her knees getting kicked in the head and nobody steps in and says, whoa, whoa, stop, hold on, calm down. Well, that's exactly what happened to my first guest today. In June, bystanders just a few feet away watched and recorded Catherine repeatedly being beaten by another woman as her toddler son watched in horror. Now, this one went viral, so I know you've seen it. No one did a damn thing to help her. Take a look. Cameras rolled as a toddler tried to defend his mother as she was being viciously attacked. Caught on video, 27-year-old Catherine Ferreira getting savagely punched in the face and chest. On top of her, a woman in a McDonald's uniform also spitting on her. Ferreira's two-year-old son, Xavion, is the only bystander seen moving in closer, attempting to kick the attacker, pleading for it to stop. The woman threatens him. Police called it disgusting. The witnesses appear to do nothing to stop the fight. Catherine, you've seen this video. You don't like watching it, but you've seen it, right? Yeah. And you were attacked by a former co-worker, right? Correct. Latia Harris, when you were walking home. Now, you had your two-year-old son with you, right? Correct. And this was all over some rumor about a guy. Correct. Um, were you shocked? I was because I personally know Tia and I think it was hyped up. <laughs> you think this was egged on and... Yeah. Okay. So she's pounding on you on the ground and you say nine or ten people watched but not one person intervened. No one. Were you aware that they were filming this at the time? Yeah. Now, she's been charged, right? Correct. With what? Assault and... Um... Aggravated assault. Uh, um, terroristic threats. Right. Because she said she was going to kill you. Right. Okay. Now, you had a broken nose. Right. Right. Uh, you had a concussion. You had bruises and lacerations and stuff all over you. What gets me is you're with your two-year-old son. Right. What did you think about what was going on with your son seeing you in this condition and seeing you get beaten like this? I think it was really unfair to him. He's a two-year-old. <laughs> right. Now, he... Um, Thank you. He actually tried to help you. He, he was trying to get this woman off of his mommy. Hey. Did she say anything to him? You better get your son before I kick him in the face, too. Your two-year-old? My two-year-old. Do you take him out with you now? Do, have you made this same walk? Do no. <laughs> I fear for our safety. Mm -hmm. Do you think there might be retaliation from her or her friends or family? Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe so. What do you think about these people taking the videos and posting them? I think it's horrible. I think it's, it's, part, of, it's part of the reason why things are happening. Mm -hmm. 
You say they need to stop and think that these are real people with real lives, right? Right. Um, and so all of these people have seen this happening to you. What do you think about the fact that nobody stepped in? I think people videotaped them. You stood there and you videotaped it. So you were involving yourself. You just weren't involving yourself to help, but you involved yourself. A good point. Let me ask Studio One, does it bother y'all that there was a two-year-old child there and nobody protected this child's mother? Yes. Well, let's take a poll. I, I, I want to take a poll. If, if you witnessed a fight, would you record it and share it on the Internet? Or would you jump in and help the victim? Now, tweet your thoughts with either hashtag share fight or hashtag help victim. We're going to have the results at the end of the show, but I want to ask the audience. Now, be honest, because, I, I mean, really put yourself in a situation and think about it. If you walked up on a situation like this, would you videotape it and share it, or would you help the victim? If you would videotape it and share it, raise your hand. If you would get involved and help the victim, raise your hand. Really? Why is it that everybody in the audience says you would, but nobody does? I, I hope seeing there's a real person with a real life and a real impact with this, that it does cause us to think about it more. Uh, you're doing okay? Physically? Physically, I'm better. You, you look uh, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot better. Yeah. But emotionally, this is difficult for you. Yeah. And I, I really want to offer you some help with that and and put it behind you I, I i really hope you do that so okay coming up another girl fight gone viral this one had so many views that people were making vine comedy skits about it there are even five apps you can download to make fun of the attack find out why one girl got hit with a shovel and why the attacker says she is actually the victim we'll grab back I tossed the shovel at her and I guess it was aimed kind of perfect and it just hit her in the back of the head. I'm not taking any crap from anyone. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. What would happen? I think you're a know-it-all. You're just running your mouth. Yeah, I am. If you put bullets. I told you. And the victims of bullets. When she would hit me, my head hit the locker. In the same house. I don't trust anyone in this house. You've been a problem. Pump your brakes. I'm done. Since you got involved in this. Get out of my face. I'm so done. That's tomorrow. Today, we're talking about wild behaviors caught on these phone cameras and uploaded to the Internet for the entire world to see. Now, 15-year-old Emily was recorded throwing a shovel at another girl who she says was bullying her online. Her mother, Deborah, says she's proud of her daughter for defending herself. Take a look. My daughter, Emily, is not the bully everyone is making her out to be. I'm a victim of bullying, and these same girls bullied me up until eighth grade. The girls at school did call Emily for a slut, ugly, fat. They shut my locker when I was at it, threw my books down, blocked me in the hallway. I did know Emily was having problems with one girl. Emily was trashed by that girl on social media. On Facebook, we were messaging each other. We were going to fight. I said, meet me at a park, and then she said she didn't want to wait, so she came to my house. I really thought, like, should I do this, should I not, and maybe I should stick up for myself. Come on! We fought. Oh, bitch! Then I told her to leave. Get the f*** off my yard then, bitch! She said she wasn't leaving, and I said, I'm just going to shoot you with a BB gun. She said, go get it. I wasn't really going to shoot her. I turned around, went to go get it. She came up behind me. I could see the shovel, and I just picked it up and hit it. I tossed the shovel at her, and it, like, I guess it was aimed kind of perfect, and it just hit her in the back of the head. I'm not taking any crap from anyone. 
When I watched that video, I was furious. I had never wanted to be violent with other people's kids until that moment. I felt really bad that I hit her with it, but if she wasn't going to leave, I didn't know what else to do. I know these girls would not have left my house had Emily not grabbed the shovel. In some way, I am proud of her. Well, Emily's fight became an online sensation, and I'm talking hundreds of thousands of people have gone on to social media and viewed this, some dubbing it as the best fight ever. But her mom, Deborah, says Emily's 15 minutes of fame has changed her life forever. Take a look. Everybody there had a phone out videotaping it, even my cousin. There was maybe four different angles of the fight. Josh's was just the best one. Josh put the video on Facebook, and I told him to take it down, and he refused. He sold the video without my consent and my mom's consent. He offered to give me the money he got for it, but he never did. What my daughter did, it's kind of hard to say I regret it because at some point she had to put her foot down and take up for herself. I regret that it was filmed. Since the fight went viral, it's been really hard on Emily. Emily has had over 2,000 death threats. I had to take Emily into school where she was locked into a counselor's office where she sat throughout the whole school day interacting with no one. A lot of people were making fun of me on Twitter, calling me names. The girl posted on Twitter 800 retweets and I whooped that bitch's ass again. People like threatened to hit me with cars. They said I should get hit by a shovel because it wasn't fair to her. After the fight, I was very nervous to leave because I knew I was going to get all this hate that I already had on social media. I can't talk to anybody about anything because they say, are you going to get the shovel? Social media has made my life a lot worse. Before we get to this, I, I, I've got to... I've got to try to understand why there was a fight at all. We were just arguing back and forth. Then eventually she told me to kill myself. You guys are talking back and forth on the internet. Were you tweeting or? No, Facebook. Facebooking back and forth. And said, okay, we're going to have a fight, right? Yeah. I, I read all the exchanges going back and forth. And so you're going to meet at a park. Yeah. And then you say, well, oh, I can't do it. My mom, I don't have a ride. Yeah. My mom can't bring me to the fight. Yeah. So they'll just bring the fight to you yeah. at your house. So they stop and pick up Josh, Mr. Videographer, yeah. um, and there are some other people there. And so they all come over to your house to have the fight. Yeah. And you're outside waiting for them, right? Yeah, I was already on my porch. Yeah, you're, you're on the porch. Okay, now it's my understanding that she walks up and y'all say hi, and you say, would you like to see my new puppy? Oh, yeah, I was talking to Josh and Haley. Yeah, so you, you show your new puppy. Yeah. And then did everybody go inside and look at the new color in your room? No, just Josh and the other girl. Then you all go around to the backyard to look at some chickens? Oh, they wanted to see them. They haven't seen them in a while. Okay, so we've got this fight going on. It's going to wind up somebody getting in the head with a shovel, but we're looking at puppies and room colors and going back and looking at chickens and all of that. But then the fight starts, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, you say that you hit the girl with the shovel because she wouldn't leave. Yeah. But in the video, I hear her say that she will leave if you call the cops. I wasn't going to call the cops. Well, no, but my point is she says, if you're going to call the cops, I'm leaving. And you said, well, I didn't want to call the cops because then I'm going to get criticized for being a snitch. Yeah. And you say you're kind of proud of her because why? I was proud that she took up for herself. Wasn't exactly proud that she used the shovel, but it did get the girl to leave. And I understand at one point during the fight, you both stopped to fix your hair. Yeah. <laughs> Emily did not want to fight. Um, Emily's not a fighter. If she wanted to fight, I don't think the room would have been shown, the chickens would have been introduced, the puppies would have been discussed, the fixing the hair. Here's the still where they're fixing hair. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, the, the cameras definitely played a big part in fixing of the hair and don't hit me in my face, don't kick me. I've never seen anything like that before in my life in a fight. It was. And then I noticed when you did hit her with the shovel, she was retreating, right? She was moving away. Yeah. So it, it seems like she, she was moving away from you and, and you weren't in a, a immediate threat. You had to run after her and throw the shovel to hit her in the back of the head. Yeah. Why'd you hit her with a shovel? I wasn't really thinking, like, after everything done happened, I just, my mind went blank. Okay, at this point, were you just in a rage? I guess I was just kind of really mad. When I get mad, I don't really think. She could have been killed. The whole deal could have been worse. It could have been felony charges. Well, coming up, why Emily's mom says she had no choice but to hit the girl with a shovel, and we're going to meet the boy behind the camera, and we're going to find out why he just kept rolling. wanted to be famous. The video changed my life and I got a lot of attention when the video went viral. Social media is definitely powerful. Well, 15-year-old Emily was videotaped fighting a girl who she says was bullying her. The fight went viral and became known as the shovel fight. Uh, one of Emily's classmates, Josh, shot the brawl uploaded it to Facebook where it became an internet sensation. But why didn't Josh put down the camera and step in to help his classmates? Take a look. I decided to film the fight because I'm a filmmaker and I just like to film things. When we got to Emily's house, Emily and this other girl were acting like they were like best friends. That's why she made me think that the fight wasn't actually going to be serious. We were looking at chickens for puppy, so I really thought it was not a legitimate fight. They were slapping each other in the beginning and kicking each other and they stopped in the middle of the fight to fix their hair. Here's the hair. I felt like the fight was getting real when I heard Emily say, I'm about to go get my gun. I expected for Emily to get a BB gun, but instead she got a shovel. Oh, Emily, don't. I can't hear. Look that hard, dude. I can't hear. We watched the fight video and we just decided to post it because we thought it was funny. It got 80 to 100,000 likes in just the first day that it was posted. I sold the video for $600 to a social media website. I've always wanted to be famous. The video changed my life and I got a lot of attention when the video went viral. I never thought of all of these phone numbers to be in my phone, like Full Screen Productions, Tosh.0, Paramount Pictures, 2020 New York, ABC News. Social media is definitely powerful. It can, can change your life. So this is a big win for you? And, like, I've always wanted to have attention because I never really had that much attention when I was in elementary school. So it's a big <clears> win <throat> for, like, um, being, like, famous, I guess. Famous. I had that 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. Were y'all friends? Were. Why, are, why aren't you friends now? Uh, this video. Pretty fake. What? That it's and fake um, her me. mom giving me threats and things. Because her mom threatens you? Yeah. At a restaurant? At a restaurant um, in my hometown and then... He approached place. my table while I was at dinner acting like a film director. I come up to my <clears> table <throat> like, are you talking about that shovel girl fight? And I was are you serious? And I cussed him like a dog and I don't regret it a bit. I still feel the same way. Well, you sent messages to Josh on exactly. Facebook. Yes, I did. Um, you are a piece of blank. You are no friend. All you care about is yourself. Yes. Oh, yes. You're so blanking ugly. Um, and I hope people hate you for what you have done. We had to choose some of these that we could get by the FCC. Oh, I agree. These are the nicer <clears throat> ones. I agree completely. Do you think that's appropriate? I mean, you're an adult in this yes, situation. I am. And, and you think it's appropriate to be 
sending messages to a 15-year-old, calling him names and demeaning him and uh, hoping people hate him and uh, all of this stuff? I mean, does that seem reasonable to you? It does when my child's involved. Really? That seems reasonable to you? I mean, he That seems like a mature adult response in this situation. Yeah. When my child's involved, it does seem... I, I'm so sorry to hear that. Okay, so you profited from this, right? You sold it. Yes. 600 bucks. Yeah. How do you feel about it now? I regret filming it. I regret re going to the fight and uh, not stopping it, selling it. I regret everything about it. Why? Because I can see the pain that Deborah is going through with, like, if that was my kid or something, then I would be... I would probably be sending those messages too, like, why did you film that? Why didn't you stop it? And why did you even go on my property? Yeah. Um, so have you changed your mind about it? Because when we first talked to you about it, it was like, man, you were proud and excited and just seemed really happy about the whole thing. That was when, you, uh, when the show first contacted me about it. I mean, I was really happy about it because that's when it first, like, that got viral and went out there. It was over the weekend. Yeah. This is Monday. <laughs> but I'm not happy about it anymore. You, you had a question for me. What was your question? What would your opinion be on me not stopping the fight? Like your opinion if you, if you knew that I recorded the shovel fight video and I was just walking on the block and then you saw me, what would you think of me? Well, in fairness, I, I, I don't think you should have done it. I sure don't think you should have sold it. Of course. I think if you were any kind of friend, you would have kept these two girls that you knew both from getting in some stupid fight. And I think bystanders who do nothing to protect the victims are as guilty as the bullies that do the bullying. And the truth is, you seem to me to be a very nice young man. Thank you. And I hope that you've learned your lesson, that as bystanders, we all have duties and responsibilities. And I, I would hope that as her mother, you would counsel her about what to do in that kind of situation. Because we're getting ready to talk about young kids who decide to light themselves on fire. Seriously, they light themselves on fire. Uh, it was a social media challenge after all. Somebody dared you, and a girl's night out at a club that went terribly, terribly wrong. Another fight, and nobody did anything. Wait till you hear the outcome of that. All on tape. We'll be right back. I just got out of the hospital last night. I can't sleep. I burnt my neck very bad. Everybody on the internet is stupid, including me. I got some rubbing alcohol here, and it says, uh, warning, flammable. So, uh... I just did the fire challenge and you can see my skin is all red. My face, my face right here is peeling because it burns so much. Are you kidding me? Th that is a new trend online and it's frightening doctors, firefighters and parents. It's called the fire challenge. I call it stupidity. And believe it or not, kids are actually setting themselves on fire and posting the videos on YouTube. It's a disturbing and dangerous new trend. Teenagers across America are engaging in a deadly stunt called a fire challenge. It is the newest internet craze. Teenage boys applying hand sanitizer or nail polish remover to their body and then lighting themselves on fire. That's what authorities say happened to a Santa Ana teen. He's being treated tonight for severe burns. Being burnt alive is one of the worst things that could ever happen. The pain is excruciating. Don't burn yourself. The fire challenge is stupid. Do something else. 
Ryan set himself on fire because he thought he could do it better than the other people he watched. He realizes now that this was a mistake. Uh, he's joining us on the phone. Ryan, are you there? Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm better than you if you, if you, yeah. set, if you set yourself on fire. Uh, let, did you do this? Uh, yeah, I did it. Uh, what happened to you when you did this? I had second degree burns on my neck and face. Second degree burns on your neck and face. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it wasn't fun. Yeah, and that, that's you we're looking at right now. Yeah, um, um, I actually have not watched the video. I, uh, can't take myself to watch myself on fire. You would not advise doing this? No, I actually made, um, a couple videos explaining what I had to go through through the, the coming weeks because of this challenge and I uh, put them up on my YouTube channel to pretty much try and warn the internet of these challenges. Yeah, I, I looked at that and I was I was glad that you did that. So thank you for doing that. I, I thought that was uh, uh, as smart as setting yourself on fire was yeah. stupid. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured I did something really stupid. Might want to just try and redeem myself a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think you did. Uh, Jeremy Pepper is a public relations and social media consultant who says more than a billion users visit YouTube each month. Jeremy, yes. How, how do we get this under control? What the hell is going on? Well, the fact is YouTube is now more popular with the 18 to 24 year olds than any channel on cable according to Nielsen. The good thing about it is a lot of these internet memes and viral videos, they have a very short shelf life, so a couple of weeks and then something new comes along. But when you have these challenges, they spread. They spread on YouTube, they spread on Facebook, they spread on Instagram video and Vine videos. Everyone wants their 15 minutes of fame, and when you see it on the nightly news, you get the fame that you were looking for. My next story is... Um the worst case scenario of catching a fight on camera. A young woman, according to some news reports, accidentally photobombed a group of women outside a nightclub who they say got so mad they punched and kicked her until she died in the street. What took the jury only one day to reach a verdict in the beating death of Kim Pham? Caught on camera, a brutal beating outside of Santa Ana nightclub. Police say the 23-year-old Chapman College graduate was kicked and beaten into unconsciousness. An acquaintance anonymously posted this video, allegedly taken in the final moments of the brutal beating. The LA Times reporting Pham accidentally stepped in front of a picture being taken. You have one young woman who's dead. And you have two young women who've been convicted of a homicide. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. Uh, Kim's best friend, Mimi, says she wishes someone would have stopped recording the fight on their phone and stepped in to help. Uh, yeah, really. Mimi, what happened here? Kim and another girl started fighting. And her friends were there to push other people away, trying to pull them apart. Um, and there were a lot of bystanders, you know, if you watch the video, people were pulling out their phone, you know, they're chanting the fight, they were laughing, that you see people smiling, you know, recording this, they were very entertained. It's so, so disturbing. Earlier in the show, we asked you to take a poll. If you witnessed a fight, would you record and share it on the internet or jump in and help the victim? And the results are... 12% said they would tape it and share the fight, and 88% say they would help the victim. But you know, it's interesting, I don't see people jumping in 88% of the time. It's like we know the socially desirable response, so we give it, but that isn't what we actually do. Uh, coming up, her parents think she's a viral video in the making. Wait until you see the home fights they caught on tape. Let's go! You ruined my fight! Why would you do this? She had a glass bottle that she broke, and she was stabbing her pillow, practicing the stab box. No!
Lisa and Tom say they are afraid of their 15-year-old daughter, Katie. Lisa says she fears Katie is going to become famous on the Internet in one of these girl fight viral videos. And Tom has called his daughter the devil in disguise because of her violent outburst. Take a look. I have no friends because of you. Nasty. Every horrible word you could think of, I have to say about my child. Stop me until you scare little kitten, you dumb. She is mean to her family, mean to her friends. If she degrades you. She'll say, you're the worst mom in the world. I hope dad has an affair so that you divorce him. This house is like a war zone. Katie, stop. Are you kidding me? Why would you do this? You want my private? No. Katie got angry. She threw a bar stool because that's what was handy. I am scared to death of her. No, Katie. Stop crying. I should be the one crying. You're ruining my life. I have locked myself in my bedroom. She had a glass bottle that she broke, and she was stabbing her pillow, practicing to stab us. I don't have any hope left. Without Dr. Phil, we have nowhere to go. I've never had anybody ever treat me as badly as. Katie does. Tom and I came back from our trip from Mexico. She said she was praying that we would die in a plane crash. She's killing me. <laughs> well, Lisa says that Katie's out of control behavior is understandably taking a toll on her marriage. I'm sick of you! Yes, you did! You never lied to My husband, Tom, does not have patience for what Katie is doing. He has gotten to the point where he will just get so frustrated and angry. Let go of me! No. Let go! He will need to leave the house. I just think he's afraid that he might unintentionally hurt her. Katie, you will be grounded again. You! That's not very wise to say. It's not a very wise decision. You're not even my real dad, dumbass. Katie antagonizes her dad. She will throw water bottles at him, get up. punch him, and hit him. Oh! Stop. Katie, quit stop hitting me. Hitting. He will push her against the wall to stop her. Get the f here. Get the f off me! I have to remind my husband that Katie is our priority, not just mine. I feel like I'm doing it all. I need to save my child's life. You need to work with me, because I'm going to make this work. I'm fixing my baby. Okay, look, let's, let's get right to this. There's no question that she's out of control, right? Yes. How did this girl go from an infant to a tyrant? How did it happen? I'm not sure. It just seemed like she blew up one day a couple of years ago. You said, quote, she runs the home. She does. Absolutely. So she runs this house. There are two adults in the house, but you've abdicated control. She runs the home. You do whatever you can to stay out of the way, avoid conflict. She runs the home. Right. Yes, we do. She well, how's that working for you? It it's not. How's it working for her? She doesn't seem happy. If she's totally in control and she wants control, then why is she in such a rage? I can't figure out. Do you think if she wanted control and she's gained it, right? She's running the house. She's in charge. Then you would think she would be happy if that's what she wanted, right? She just doesn't seem to be able to handle not getting her way. If she, if she wants something and we tell her no, she, she doesn't accept it. And if you do let her have something, she wants more. It's just like nothing's ever enough to satisfy her. So obviously that's not what she wants. I mean, if she wanted what she wanted, then she would be happy. But she gets it and it's not enough, right? right. You say it's his fault. You say it's his fault. He's more lax than I am, and he has given in more than I have. Do you think she blames you for this problem? Uh, yes. Because yeah, I just asked her, and she kind of mealy mouthed around about it, like she didn't want to own it in front of you, but that's not what you said to us. She says, quote, I feel like a single parent.
Tom acts inconvenienced by Katie's issues. You know, I don't need it to get to the point where if I am in her face yelling, she will attack. And it's very hard to control yourself in instances like that. She was caught shoplifting. Yes. You went to pick her up. I, um, she was home and she told me that she stole some medication so I took her back to the store. You were taking her back? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, she grabbed the steering wheel? Yes. While I was driving, she pulled me off the side of the road. What did you do at that point? From what I can remember, I just started screaming and couldn't, told her, you know, I couldn't believe she would do something like that. She could have killed us. <clears throat> um, you know, that's it. I'm taking you to the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. And how did it go when you got to the sheriff's department? Um, she ran out of the sheriff's department and had a meltdown and the um, sheriffs went to pick her up in a field that she was in and took her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And how long was she there? A um, couple hours. And they turned her loose saying what? There really wasn't anything that they could do for us or for her so mm -hmm. we went home. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what we can agree on right quickly. Can we agree that you two are not on the same program in terms of how to discipline and control and guide this child? I think we've got more on the same program. Mostly but, we're not. Yeah, mostly, but uh, we are getting a little bit closer. Is it significant to either of you that you gave me two different answers simultaneously? Yes. We try to work together on it, but, you know, there is a definitely a difference in the way we parent. You're inconsistent in your approaches. Yes. You say he's checked out. Uh, she's closer to boys than she is to girls, right? Yes. Which suggests that she may be really seeking male attention, and you're kind of disengaged. Do you think those might have anything to do with each other? I don't believe so. Katie has always okay. got along better with a single person than she does a group or, or more than one. Coming up, Katie is here along with six other girls who all have a history of being bullied, victims, beaten, or videotaped. You don't want to miss what's about to happen next. Now, Katie's parents came here wanting to try and understand her behavior. I didn't get very far into that, but I'm going to take a giant step forward with a social experiment never done before in daytime. These seven girls, Hannah, Katie, Lily, Caitlin, Nicole, Tempest, and one more Hannah have never met. Here they come. They don't know each other. They don't know each other's bully story. One of these girls says she was punched in the face by a mean girl. Another says she's just too pretty for girls to like her. Another was accused of sending harassing texts to a classmate, causing that girl to jump off of a tower and kill herself. Now, these teens will learn each other's stories shortly, and learn a lot more in the process. They have been selected for our Dr. Phil Bully Challenge. Young, pretty and aggressive, standing up to mean girls. Now, psychiatrist and medical director for the County of Los Angeles Department of Child and Family Services, Dr. Charles Sophie is going to be helping me in this series. Now, there's a bus waiting for all of you out back, so girls, go ahead and head out, and I will see you at the Dr. Phil house. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, what would happen? I think you're a know-it-all. You're just running your mouth. Yeah, I am. Uh... If you put bullets... I'm done! I told Shut you! Up. ...and the victims of bullets... When she would hit me, my head hit the locker. ...in the same house. I don't trust anyone in this house. You've been a problem... Pump your brakes. I'm done. ...since you got involved in this. Get out of my face! I'm so done. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow... And see if these girls become friends, bullies, victims, how it works out. Will this be Lord of the Flies? And we'll see. Thanks to all of my guests for being here today. So long.